Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to retrieve data from a web server in a JavaScript format called JSON via a technology called AJAX using jQuery. A lot of, a lot of terminology flying around there. Let's start with AJAX. Uh, it stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It's basically a way to transfer data between a web page and a web server without having to do a full page refresh using an HTTP GET or an HTTP POST. So you don't have to do a full page refresh in order to send data back and forth between the page and the server. It all looks rather seamless, like you're in a very rich environment working with your, uh, with your web page. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of websites use AJAX today. That's uh, kind of a, a technology that's been around for quite some time. What's new and interesting is how you can use jQuery to simplify that process. So the way jQuery works with, uh, with making AJAX requests is that uh, it will make a request, uh, allow your JavaScript to say, hey, send me some information, and then you register a function. You say, when that data comes back, execute this function. So then it allows the, 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 uh, the user of the application to continue working. Once the data does come back successfully, then things on the web page can change because that function will fire off and you can update the web page with new data from the web server or whatever the case might be. So that's the asynchronous part. You set up a function, a callback, I guess you could say, that will execute once the data comes down successfully. The XML part of AJAX is a bit of a misnomer because nowadays instead of setting, uh, sending uh, XML back and forth between the web page and the server, most developers prefer to send JSON around. JSON. And the benefit is that it's a JavaScript object syntax that you can work with more easily as a JavaScript developer. So that brings us to what J JSON stands for. It's JavaScript Object Notation. It's a lightweight format for transferring data. So take a look at this file that I've created. It has a very simple example. It follows the syntax of an object literal that we've been using up to now with an open and close curly brace and then you define a, uh, a property name or an attribute name and then its value and then you use a comma to separate it from the next name value pair okay or key value pair and now usually the data is being generated dynamically from like a database using some web server technology like ASP.NET or PHP or what have you. However, in this case, I just want to keep things simple. I don't want to talk about the server side of things. I'm just creating a hard-coded file called data19.json and we'll just request this and it'll bring back this object uh, whenever we click a link, for example, in our web page. Okay, so let me close that down for now. You can see that I've already set up my example c9js underscore 19.html is what we've come accustomed to. The only difference here, well, you can see, first of all, I've got a reference to jQuery. I've got a reference to my script 19.js. And then in the body of my web page, I have an anchor tag with an href set to just a, a pound sign, which means don't go anywhere, just stay here. All we're trying to do is collect a click event for this hyperlink that's been defined as get JSON data. All right, so to begin with, let's make sure that our example is actually running and connected to our script 19.js file, and it seems to be just fine. As you would expect, I just have my simple ready function here defined, and I'll go ahead and get rid of the got here alert. So what we want to do is create an example where when somebody clicks that link, that link that anchor that has an ID of click me, we want to fire off a function. And so what we want to do is use the get JSON method of jQuery in order to uh, request data from a web server. Now in this case, again, we're just going to hard code that URL to um, what do we call that data 19.json all right but then what we need to do is set up a callback function if you will that will fire once the data is, is successfully retrieved from the web server 
Now inside of this, what we want to do is grab the data uh, that is going to be returned. Get JSON will send our callback function the data that it retrieves from the URL. So that's what we're going to be working with. And what we want to do is take that data and get it into a format that we can display nicely on our web page. So there's a couple of different ways we go about this. I'm just going to use a technique that I saw on jQuery's own documentation. I'm going to use the jQuery each utility function, which allows me to iterate over a JavaScript collection. This data is just a JavaScript object used as a collection, or some people call it a map containing a number of objects comprised of a key and associated value. So the jQuery each function allows me to define a callback function and for each JavaScript object contained in the data collection, the callback function will be passed the key and associated value of that given object. So what we'll do inside of here is use our items array that we've defined. We call this items. So we have this items array that we've defined. And what we want to do is add items to the end of that array. So I'm going to use this push method, which will add new items to the end of the array. Pretty cool. And what I want to do is pass in the key and the value in some way. What I'm going to do is wrap these values in some HTML. So we'll start off with a, a series of list items. And each of them will have an ID. And so for the ID, I want to use the key. And then I'm going to add the, the value here. That will be visible. So the key will be the ID, and then the value will be visible inside of the list item. There's a lot going on here with single quotes and double quotes. Just make sure you have you take your time and type this in correctly. The double quotes are going to be needed to surround the key. The single quotes are going to be what differentiates each of the three literal strings and allows us to append them to the key and the value using the plus operators. All right, so just take your time and make sure you get that right or else you're going to get some weird, weird results. All right, so uh, after our each statement, we built up this, uh, this collection of items. And now we want to take that collection of items, that list, that array of items, and we're going to spit them out into HTML. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to do it all in one line using another feature of jQuery that we haven't looked at up to this point. Oops. So up to now, if I wanted to get at an individual item, I would just pass in, in a literal string, uh, some CSS3 selector. There's another way that we can use uh, the jQuery um, object, and, and that is by passing in a tag we haven't used yet, we can construct a new tag from scratch. So inside here, we're going to configure our new tag and then append it to our body. And so we'll get to that in just a moment here. So let's open it up and close up a new object literal and inside of there I'm gonna set some properties of this new uh, this new unordered list that I'm constructing from scratch so I'm gonna give it a class for example and that class will just be um, interest list and then I wanna give it its inner HTML and I'm gonna set that to I'm gonna take my items and I'm gonna call a join method so we've used items.push and now we're using items.join and what join will do is take each element of the array and just concatenate them together and if we wanted to concatenate them together and separate them with a comma we can pass in like a comma for example in a literal string but in this case I don't want anything uh, to um, uh, to separate them so I'm just going to pass in an empty string with no space or anything between it alright so now I have this I'm going to um, Take this newly constructed unordered list, complete with a class and the HTML that we've been constructing from this statement as we've gone through each item 
from our data, okay? And I'm gonna call append to, and I'm gonna append it to our body tag. So we're just basically adding that list to our body. So let's go ahead and save this and see if it works. We've done a ton of typing and no testing and that makes me nervous. All right, so awesome. It's gone out, grabbed the data from presumably across the world, but in reality, just from our own hard drive. It has, um, let's use the F12 developer tools here and just kind of see what we get. Notice that it's created a new unordered list with the class of interest list with near a number of list items with each with the ID that we would come to expect. And those were set up for us. Those are the keys from our data19.json file. And then we see the value as a text, as a child of the list item. Great. That worked just fine. Now there is one little problem with using getJson. The beauty of it is its simplicity. It allows us to set things up very quickly and easily. Downside is that if we were to have an issue with the web server or for some reason it can't find the JSON, notice what happens when we re-execute our web page. Nothing happens at all. No error message, nothing. And so that's the downfall of the JSON uh, of the uh, of the get JSON method. Fortunately, there is a replacement for this, a, a longer version. Let me just comment all of this out and kind of start over this example because we're going to need to use the more complicated form if we really want the robust features of. Uh, of our Ajax calls. So we're gonna to have to use the Ajax method in jQuery. All right, so it's going to allow us to set up, for example, using a object literal, the URL that we want to pull from. So here again, this is going to be uh, data19.json. We want the data type to be JSON, and there's some other options in this regard, like XML. Uh, when a success happens, then we're going to define a callback function, passing in the data, and we're just going to copy and paste what we did before there, so we don't have to rewrite all of this stuff. So if you'll forgive me for just a moment here, I'm going to copy all of that, stick it right there. All right. Now the problem with pasting in, sometimes it's hard to tell what belongs to what. But I think that would do it there. And if for example, there was some sort of issue. Then we can capture it. So say, for example, there's a 404. We can, which means uh, the location was not found. We can pop up an alert box. So let me make sure here that I that this all lines up the way that I would hope for it to. This is the trickiest part when you start getting so deeply nested with so many uh, curly braces it's sometimes it's difficult to see what you've done and I'm not even completely confident that I've done this correctly we may have an error in our jQuery here but let's just try and see what we get okay that seemed to work awesome and now what happens when it can't find the file like the test case previously 
we change the file name, we run the example, and we don't get the results we were hoping for. Maybe the uh, problem was not a 404 error. Let's try and see what we do get here. Whoops, our script. Hmm, no clues. Ah, and the reason why we're not going to get anything is because we're not going to get a 404 from our hard drive <laughs> that's only served up from a web server. So unfortunately, this example may have been doomed from the start. If we were to copy and paste, copy this example and put it on a real web server that we could deliver us a 404, we might have a little more success here. Oh well, I didn't think that through until I started recording this video. But uh, you can go ahead and copy this up if you have access to a web server and it, it hopefully would work. But the good news is that it would allow us to check for the error code and then handle the case where uh, it, there was some problem uh, returned back from the web server that would not allow us to continue this, uh, this operation of of um, parsing out the data that was returned, okay? So at any rate, that is how you retrieve JSON data using uh, Ajax via uh, jQuery. Hopefully I didn't confuse anybody. This is not a requirement, but as your skills progress, you will definitely want to use uh, JavaScript and jQuery to communicate with a backend web server. And this is probably the easiest way to do it. All right, doing great. Let's continue moving forward. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.